Okay, I'm obviously not in my kayak. Um, the wind is going to pick up pretty hard later on in the day, so I've decided to join my cousin on a shore based fishing trip. Right now, we're actually jigging for fluke, believe it or not, and they're still around. Yep, he's using um, 5 inch gulp mullets, and I'm using a 3 inch uh, non gulp regular plastic jerk shad. In any case, our real target is winter flounder. And that's something I haven't done in probably over a decade. In any case, right now I'm using a 3 16th ounce uh, gammy ball head jig. And this is 8 pound braid to 10 pound floral leader. And I'm just popping it off the bottom. Letting us sink on slack line. Yeah, I, I do need gulp. They're not gonna hit just a plane. It's too cold for that. <laughs> Came off. Oh, that's not a. What the f is that? It's something. It's a micro bass. Could you? No, no, it's it, it's a striper. I just yeah. Well, I don't want to slap him on the concrete. <laughs> yeah. Hold the rod up. <laughs> Small fish. I didn't want to haul him and him f and he's no no. They gotta be 28 inches. This is a small one. Nice fish though. Oh yeah. It's got lines. They want to see it. Don't put him back. Yeah, this bulkhead is uh, the slice of America. They don't come back. Everyone's really friendly, and it seems like they've been coming here for years. They all know each other. Um, anyway, so here we've settled down to flounder fishing, and by far the most tedious kind of fishing I've done in a long time. Because now he's not there anymore. that chair like a hero. <laughs> oh, come on. Trout worm. Yep, so we've caught both species of flatfish in New Jersey um, late October. And yeah, we're using um small gulp worms and sandworms probably not the best choice that day my cousin was killing them on gulp um, a week prior to this but it seems like clams and sandworms you know like the real bait is working a lot better you know they would they would try to eat the gulp but they wouldn't get the hook and just over and over they would eat right up to the hook shank and then stop And the rig is just a simple twisted dropper loop, uh, maybe like a three inch loop to like a four inch um, sinker tag end. And I haven't tied one of these in a long time. And that one just failed. My first real knot failure in years probably. He broke off the freaking... 
Wow, that's a bad... That's a bad knot. Um, this fat keeper my cousin caught a little later. And th there's a couple odd things about winter flounder. One is they've got this kind of bone spur, like a spike, um, near where their belly is. Um, they have virtually no odor to them. Uh, there's, you know, like they're slimy just like any other fish, but th there's, there's no smell. And I found the best way to scale them is just with the, the blade of your knife. Anyway, I take the head off and I'm going to take off the four pieces of fillet. We're doing a, a slightly updated um, flounder and crab dish. The traditional flounder or sole dish is um, crab stuffed flounder, right? And you you kind of spread like a crab mixture over the fillet, then you roll it up and you bake it. You end up with sort of a 70s cruise ship kind of fine dining dish. Um, no texture whatsoever, just a soft uh, mass of fish and crab. So here we're going to update the dish to about 1999 with a, um, a shellfish uh, bell pepper sauce and just lump crab meat and shrimp um, that we saute. Um, but what we're going to do, the, the key thing to this dish is um, we're going to retain the skin and when we saute the fish, we're going to make it crispy. So here, just um, some sliced shallots some red bell pepper, roughly chopped, uh, sliced garlic. All of this is going to be strained out after we blitz it. So there's some uh, few sprigs of thyme. And we removed the head and shell from these shrimps and uh, now we're just deveining them. Alright, and then just cut them into medium sized dice and hold it for later. And here's a can of crab meat. And you want about equal parts crab to shrimp. Alright, so here's the mirepoix or the mise en place. I'm just the head and shell of shrimp, um, the rack from the fluke, I'm sorry, from the winter flounder. And we're going to roast off um, the shrimp heads and rack first. Get your pan nice and hot and just roast until you see some color. No always season as you go, so every new thing you add to the pan, you want to salt and pepper it. So you'll let this roast for about five to seven minutes, and then you can add your veg. Alright, so now we see some fawn develop on the bottom of the pan. Veg goes in, salt, pepper, and let this mixture roast for another maybe five minutes. And then we're going to deglaze with alcohol. In this case, we're using a dry sherry wine. Uh, you can use brandy if you have it. Um, white wine is fine too. So now the sherry goes in and when you're deglazing with alcohol you just you always want to cook it out. Um, if you if you smell the fumes um, right when you pour in your alcohol it's going to smell raw and 
after a few minutes it's going to smell sweet and then you can move on to the next step this is the same process you do um, for almost any kind of protein based sauce like you know I could be roasting venison bones right now or duck bones um, it's the same thing also very similar process to making all kinds of soups and stews uh, roast in hot oil the glaze with alcohol and then add your liquid be it water in this case or chicken stock which is considered neutral uh, veal stock you know that's that's is pretty standard uh, classic technique for making sauces and soups so there we just make sure that all the good bits from the pan gets dissolved um, everything is transferred to a saucepan and we're gonna add a little bit more water just to cover and this will cook on a rapid boil for no more than 15 minutes and skim the scum that comes to the top occasionally and here we're just removing some of the shrimp heads um, we're gonna use a hand blender to blitz everything the correct way to do it probably is to use a quality um, blender like an actual juicer but anyway this is a pretty cheaply made hand blender it's not very powerful so it took a little long longer than I expected and then here we're gonna strain twice this is a fine strainer now in the restaurant we would strain it through cheesecloth um, to get all the particulates out uh, the next step is to reduce alright so here's the second straining and in this one you don't want to force anything through the strainer just let everything uh, sift through naturally because you want to remove as much of the particulates as you can and here the sauce is going to reduce for about 10 minutes and generally speaking you want to remove um, you want to strain very well so there's no particles in the sauce before you reduce it that's going to keep it nice and fresh all right, so here's a diced shrimp, a little pad of butter, tiny bit of oil, and salt pepper. All right, so while that's going, the sauce is reducing. Alright, so once the shrimp is almost cooked through, uh, crab meat goes in. The crab meat is obviously cooked, so you just you just want to toast it through. Alright, and then off the heat, you'll add your chopped parsley. Um, notice that I chopped it right before I started sautéing the shrimp. Nice. So it was a very emerald yes. kind of dish. Uh, taste, adjust for seasoning, and then set this aside in a warm place. So this is your main garnish for the dish. Okay, so the sauce is reducing. I didn't let it go down to a traditional sauce consistency. Um, I think there was maybe a couple shrimp heads too many in the sauce. If I let it reduce any more, it's gonna to become too overpowering. So we're mounting with cold butter and when you're emulsifying butter to finish a sauce you don't want to stir you want to just swirl the pot swirl the pan until all the butter is incorporated and then the sauce can be held in a warm place for 10-15 eh, minutes okay so the sauce is set aside we're seasoning the skin side of the fish 
this is a side that's going in the pan first. When you're seasoning a fillet um, of fish, you want to be pretty high above the fillet. You want to make sure your fingers are dry and you want to let the salt kind of just rain down so it's very evenly spread. And here, once you put the fish in the very hot pan, um, just keep your fingers or use a spatula. The skin is going to want to curl. You want to try to keep it as flat as possible. You just apply pressure for about 10-15 seconds and then it's going to set. And we're going to cook the fish 80% um, on the skin side. And then we season the flesh side once the fish is in the pan. So just one finger on the fillet and just gently flip over. Now, to keep the skin crispy, we're going to baste the skin side with oil um, while the flesh side is cooking. Okay, now we're just going to hold these fillets on a plate um, and we're ready to plate the dish. So here I'm using kind of a shallow soup bowl. Um, your main garnish, your crab and diced shrimp is going in first. And just give it a little bit of vertical height. And when you're plating, you want to work very close to your plate. So, you know, here I'm saucing. The sauce pot is right next to the plate. And then your flounder fillets go on. Um, I'm going to do one skin side up and one flesh side up. And that's it. That's your flounder with crab and shrimp uh, with a shrimp head sauce. My cousin is going to give this a try. Sauce. You want a spoon? No, I'm good. How's it? I think no cream is fine, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. How's the fish cook? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, I missed it. And here's a still photo of the dish. Um, Winter flounder is delicious. I mean, it is one of the best eating fish, much better than fluke in my opinion, uh, much more versatile. And um, the limit being two, it's tasty enough that we took the trip down um, for our keepers. All right, uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe.